Hi, welcome to Community Connect. My name is Dennis Threadgill. Here I have with me Josh Bruger, City Councilman for the City of Grand Haven. Good to see you, Dennis. Well, we've changed things up just a little bit. We moved from Spring Lake Country Club to the Chambers here at City Hall. Um, yes. So yeah, we're here in a new space, but we're just going to talk to you a little bit about um, the new infrastructure and debt as we go, or do we, you know, how, how does that work? What is best? You bet, and it's great to be in council chambers where we get to make all these decisions mm -hmm. right here, so this is kind of fun. Uh, currently, the way that we pay for our infrastructure is by leveraging taxpayer dollars with funding from the state and federal government through different grants that become available. Uh, traditionally in Grand Haven, uh, we have used debt, at least in the last two decades, mm -hmm. to fund our infrastructure improvements. And we're hoping that the taxpayers will opt for a change uh, this coming season. Sure. So if we can get this straight, it's kind of like if I wanted to buy a car, should I take out a loan and pay for it that way or do I just save up? You got it. Yeah, there are um, expenses in our lives that uh, we have no choice but to take mm -hmm. out a loan for. Typically these are unexpected purchases that come up. Um, like purchasing a car or like improving our infrastructure or replacing the roof on your house, these are items in our lives that we can, if we're diligent, budget for. Sure. So that when the time comes and we need a new vehicle or we need a new roof or whatever it may be, um, we've got the cash saved up in the bank so that we can go and pay for these things as they become necessary. So the question is, does the city, do they take out that loan or do they, you know, apply for as many grants as possible and, and really take out as less as possible? You, yeah, you got it, Dennis. And it, it's a challenging thing to do. Um, for a number of years, for decades really, the city of Grand Haven did not invest a great deal of money into mm -hmm. our infrastructure. And we put it in the ground and we didn't budget to replace it at some point in time. And so in 2005, we as a city began looking seriously at our infrastructure and the many needs that we had to replace some aging components, uh, fix our surface streets, and really provide a good quality of life for residents in the city of Grand mm -hmm. Haven. When is the last time that the voters, we went before the voters to ask them to, you know, vote for the infrastructure? Yeah, you bet. Um, in 2008, we passed a millage. Uh, it was about uh, nine and a half million dollars. And in 2015, we also passed an infrastructure millage that was backed by citizens uh, passing a one mil uh, tax increase on their home, home on their homesteaded properties, excuse me. Mm -hmm. And uh, that went all toward infrastructure. The challenge is when we do this with debt um, is that that nine and a half million dollars approximately and six and a half million dollars, we've already spent that. And we still have more infrastructure that needs replacing. Okay. And we are still paying off the loans that we took out in 2008 and 2015 respectively. Mm -hmm. So in 2019, I think it's in November, is that correct? That's correct, yeah. There's another vote to go before the community members. What is the difference or what are we trying to accomplish? We've decided what's different with the uh, vote that's coming up mm -hmm. this November in 2019 is we're asking the residents of Grand Haven to switch from a borrowing scenario to a pay-as-you-go scenario. We're not at this time asking for any increase in taxes. Mm -hmm. uh, instead, when the millages that citizens voted for in 2008 and 2015 and another millage that we have out there fall off, we're asking for the residents to allow us to continue to collect those tax dollars. So they'll really see no difference in their bill. Correct, you got okay. it, that's the idea. We, we look at it as an opportune time to go to the citizens to say, we're not gonna increase your taxes and we're going to continue to invest that same money that you dedicated for infrastructure. Mm -hmm. We're gonna to continue to do that and to do it into the foreseeable future. And what is the importance, so in, in shows past on Community Connect, we've talked about the infrastructure and the importance, but just as a recap, as a reminder, what is the importance of keeping up with our infrastructure? Oh, you bet. <laughs> uh, when you put a roof on your house, uh, when you buy a car, when you pave a road or put sewer lines in the, in the underground, um, immediately they begin to depreciate. Mm -hmm. And it is very important for us as a city council and as citizens, residents in Grand Haven, um, to make sure that we have roads that are safe and passable, to make sure that our sewer uh, takes away the bad stuff and our water um, lines bring clean, good water to our houses. Yeah. That's something that we really take for granted because we just uh, expect it to happen you, yeah. until we hit a pothole 
and damage our car you or, got it. or just get kind of get annoyed by all the potholes. Absolutely. And, and the bigger challenge um, for many of us is what you can't see under the ground is equally as large a challenge or a task sure. as what you can see on top mm -hmm. uh, in the roads. And there's a lot underground. You bet. Yep. We've yep. got um, millions and millions, I think it's a half a billion dollars almost in infrastructure throughout the city of Grand Haven wow. between our roads and sewer system. So they need constant maintenance mm -hmm. and repair. And uh, that's not going to end. So again, we want to switch from a borrow and fix to a pay as you go. And how do we bridge that gap between, you know, kind of where we are now and then when the millage is? The first millage that we have uh, will become, uh, that we voted in, in 2008 is a 20-year loan that will become available in 2028. Mm -hmm. So we have about an eight, almost nine year period where we've got to do our best to leverage the assets that we already have on hand mm -hmm. in the city and with our project for Grand Landing being completed soon, um, that will free up a little bit of city resources from the general fund. And then th that money is going to need to be leveraged with state and federal tax dollars, excuse me, um, state and federal grants, mm -hmm. so that we can leverage our local tax dollars and put them back into the road. Um, it's going to be a little bit of a challenge, I'll be honest. Uh, if you are a household budget person mm -hmm. and you take care of your own budget, um, there's a transition when you're going from purchasing with credit cards to sure. purchasing with cash. And there are uh, going to be a few years in the city mm -hmm. of Grand Haven even where unless the citizens are willing to uh, incur some additional cost through maybe another millage or something like that, where we're going to have to be very uh, cautious, very mm -hmm. careful where we spend our money and do our best to leverage those state and federal funds as they come available. But in the long run, you know, if we can save yeah. and not go into debt, it's going to be better in the future, but for the kids. Absolutely. Yeah, okay. you got it. And, and the big uh, insidious nature of debt is mm -hmm. the interest payment. And we look at bonds as being very low interest, uh, and they are very low interest, but the cumulative effect over that of that over a great period of time uh, can really put a dent in our ability to sure. put our taxpayers mm -hmm. to use. Great example is from 2005 until the present, the city, through infrastructure and other borrowing activities, has borrowed just shy of $49 million. Mm. Of that $49 million borrowed, we're going to pay over $21 million in interest. Right now, we have <laughs> over $20 million in infrastructure projects that we know need to be done. Mm -hmm. Boy, if we had started paying cash as you go 10 years ago or 15 years ago, we'd be over that hump much, much sooner. Sure. So we've got a, a few years ahead of us where we're mm -hmm. gonna have to budget very diligently, uh, but it opens up at the end of that and there is a silver lining on the horizon. Great. And comparative to other states and cities, I mean, we're not alone. Right. All you, cities you are bet. going through this. If you want to have nice roads and yeah. good infrastructure, yes, they're all kind of dealing with this. You got it. Our mm -hmm. current governor mm -hmm. even ran on a campaign uh, platform of <laughs> fix the His blank roads. roads. Yeah, sure. uh, so this is a statewide challenge. Mm -hmm. And we're very fortunate in the city of Grand Haven. We've got residents who enjoy the quality of life that we have. Sure. And they want guests, we want guests who come to Grand Haven to be able to enjoy a little taste of that in the yeah. summertime. And when you're traveling, I mean, you're, you're thinking about all of those things. Yeah. Like, oh, these are nice roads. Absolutely. And, yeah, and this it, is great drinking water. I don't have to buy bottled water. Yeah, you got yeah. it. Yes, I can drink yeah. the water there. Uh, sure. There are certain <laughs> spots in our state where you have to be a little yeah. bit cautious, unfortunately. Correct. So, yeah, it's, it's our responsibility uh, as elected officials to chart the future mm -hmm. and to look down that path and find the most economical way to fix things and to repair things and to provide a great service for our community and for all of our guests. Yeah. And that's what it's all about, yeah. just enjoying life and where we live. And You got it. Perfect. Yeah. Grand Haven is a place, great place to live, great place to raise your family. And exactly. I want to keep it that way for the next few decades. Sounds good. Well, I think we're out of time. So thank you very much for uh, stopping by and quick interview. Yeah, all thank right. you very thank much, you. Dennis. I appreciate your time. Thanks for watching Community Connect. We'll see you next time. Quality and craftsmanship are at the heart of every sweet we craft, guaranteeing each tempting treat delights the taste buds and gratifies the soul. Sweet Temptations, homemade indulgences that instantly delight and ignite your senses. So whether you need an exceptional gift for someone special or just want to treat yourself, step into Sweet Temptations today and experience the taste of pure bliss. 621 Miller Drive in Grand Haven or at sweet-temptations.com. Dreaming of buying a home? Your local Lakeshore lending team, Envoy Mortgage, is ready to assist you. Call Casey or William at 616-303-0728. Love your home, love your loan.